Hello and welcome back to the Fighting Court YouTube channel. My name is Flav and today we're discussing something really important. It's a question on everybody's lips. Can Tottenham Hotspur win the Premier League this season? Obviously not. No one's saying or suggesting that we could. It's not something that can genuinely be considered as a reality. Manchester City exist. Arsenal seven years deep or six years deep into their 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 current campaign and project. They've given Arteta close to a billion pounds to try and make that a reality for them. So little old Tottenham, there is no world where Tottenham Hotspur can win the league this season. But could we? I mean, Liverpool exist. Liverpool are really good. Klopp's probably the best manager pound for pound in the Premier League as it stands. And I'm including Pep Guardiola in that. But could we? What would need to happen in the Premier League this season in order for Tottenham Hotspur to win it come May next year. No, I mean, no, obviously no, nothing. No, there's nothing that could happen in order for that to happen. But could we? Is it impossible? Yes, it's impossible. But simply asking the question, as any decent human being is allowed to do, could we? In this video, we are going to discuss everything that needs to happen through the duration of the season for Tottenham Hotspur to be considered Premier League title challengers. So before we go into this video, you've got to remember something very specific. And this is why fans of other football clubs are starting to get rattled by this sort of could we in joke that Spurs fans have, have created. Um, we're at the start of a journey. No one is expecting Tottenham Hotspur to be a title challenger this season. In fact, no one has expected us to have the start we've had. What was it eight eight games played six one two drawn zero defeated most most pundits out there or, or 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 YouTube personalities add Spurs as a bottom half team some are saying eight for ninth would be a good season for Tottenham Hotspur Paul Merson bless him said that Spurs wouldn't even finish in the top half this season but here we are top of the league international break best team in the league statistics would show but we are at the start of this journey. This is at the embryotic stage of what Tottenham Hotspur could become under Ange Postacoglu. And he said it. We need several transfer windows to get to a situation where Tottenham Hotspur can, can be in a position to legitimately be called title challengers. So what we've got here basically at Spurs is a squad that is light. Of course it's going to be light. We've, had to, we've, we've sold Harry Kane, the best player we've ever seen play at Spurs. We've had to bring in five or six players in the hope that they just slot into Ange Postacoglu's system, which is a massive shift from what we had previously with Conte. Huge shift. Whatever was entrenched in the players under Conte previously had to be reworked, reimagined and redeveloped and, and players had to buy into this new system. Not that it was difficult. The system is exciting for them to play in. Goals will be scored in this system. So it's not difficult to, for the players to buy in, but the squad is still light. In order for us to uh, mount this imaginary title challenge... We need to keep the key players fit. That means Van der Ven, Romero, Basuma, Madison and Son. Not to say that the other players are not important. They are. It's just that we have depth in the other areas. Those five players that I've just mentioned are so crucial to Tottenham right now that losing even one of them could be catastrophic to whatever wild aspirations we have from this season. So if Basuma gets injured, Hoybier comes in. Good player, Hoybier, but he's just not used Basuma. If Madison gets injured, we don't really have a number 10 or a slash attacking eight that can go into that role. There just isn't one that can do what Madison can do at Spurs. Van der Ven and Romero are building a partnership of likes we've seen only once or twice in living memory. We're thinking about maybe Ledley King, Woodgate, Toby Alderweireld, Jan Vertonghen and Romero and now Van der Ven. If one of those gets injured, the drop off to Eric Dyer, as much as I rate that Eric Dyer as a human being and I think he's a good, good person to have around and he's served us well in the past, he's just levels below those two centre backs. So the drop off is significant. And of course, Humin Son, uh, as our number nine uh, slash left winger, he's, he's light years above anything else we have going forward. If he gets injured, we would struggle, you'd imagine, to score the type of goals that Humin Son would score. So the short of it is that every single one of those players, will need to stay fit in order for Tottenham Hotspur to achieve a title challenge this season. Ben Tancor coming back. He has to come back from injury. The same player that he was before the ACL back in April, whenever it was. We're currently relying on Saar, Madison and Basuma in the midfield starting in order for us to 
play Ange Postacoglu's system. Ben Sankor obviously hasn't played under Postacoglu, but has trained under him over many months in, in, in the limited training that he's able to do. And he can play a number of those roles. He can play a six in Basuma. He did that at Juventus, although was criticised at times for doing that. Again, he's a different player than he was at Juventus. He's a different player at Spurs now. So he can play in that six, I would imagine. And also, he could do a job in Madison's role as that, that attacking eight slash ten when we've got the ball. Is he as good at Madison at doing that? No, but Bantencourt is excellent with the ball. He's also much more aggressive without it than Madison is, so it would offer another level of defensive solidity if we're trying to win the ball back in the final third. And obviously he can play in Saar's role as well. So having Bantencourt back and fit and raring to go will be a massive positive to Tottenham Hotspur this season. And again, will be a big part of how we launch this title challenge. And on top of Bentancourt coming back as the player he was before he got injured, we need Arsenal, Liverpool and City to have an off-season. At least two of them. If we can get to the end of the season and somehow, some miraculous series of events that have been outlined in this video happen and we can get to the end of the season, we're still in this title race, it needs to be against one side. Going up against Arsenal, Liverpool and City in a, in a title race might prove difficult. You could argue actually that a, 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 a title race that, that involves more than one team mean that some of the bigger clubs and these clubs involved in this title race will drop points against each other. But it typically doesn't happen or it hasn't happened in the last few years and it has been a two-horse title race and, and I think if if Spurs have any chance it needs to be one again and finally we need to have a big January transfer window Daniel Levy previously has had opportunities to back his managers when we've been in a position of strength under Harry Redknapp we were in third at Christmas time in touching distance of the leaders and we backed him by buying Ryan Nelson and Louis Saha on free and loan deals um, under Pochettino we had an opportunity after going unbeaten at home you know a long running title race with Leicester to back the team back the squad back Pochettino's ideas and build the squad that's capable of mounting a significant title challenge the next season we didn't do it and we finished second to Chelsea if I remember rightly but we weren't ever in the race this is an opportunity for Daniel Levy to, to, to learn from the errors of his ways now it might be a conversation about whether or not we're ready to make that step up, that we're able to challenge for a league title and maybe the targets won't be available in January and, and risking hundreds of millions of pounds on players in January isn't worthwhile for the overall good of what this squad can potentially do. But if the opportunity is there, if we are in touching distance of the league, if we're top come Christmas, there is no other solution to this problem of us being perennial losers than to back the, the, the squad financially and back Postacoglu financially. We need a centre-back to back up the ones we have. We need midfielder. We need an attacking player. And we probably need a left-winger as well. If he's willing to do it, well, let's see. He's, he's talked in, in the fans' forum recently about having our Tottenham back. Maybe come January, you need to put the money where your mouth is because... This is what the Premier League is all about. And you, the only way you win it typically is if you spend money. It's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. And Tottenham are big enough now and, and generate the revenue enough to make it happen. So if we're in a position in this imaginary world where we could potentially win the Champions League, win, sorry, Premier League, getting away with myself. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, who knows? Sp you know, Spurs, but we, we are very good at being self-deprecating. Most people love us an arrogant fan base, but typically Spurs know what we are. We know what, we know what our position is currently. But what we can become, even if we don't win the league this season, which of course we can't, but can we? Then uh, we're going to be a force to reckon with in the future. So thanks for listening. Remember to hit like and subscribe and all that. Get involved in the comments below. Remember to listen to the Fighting Cock podcast that comes out twice a week. And if you're interested in more of what we do at the Fighting Cock, then you become a patron. It's patreon.com forward slash the Fighting Cock. We'll see you soon.